here's what I love about vinyl. Unlike an MP3, I have to hold this. I can feel it. I can smell it. I can open it up and read. Ah, oh, well, they recorded it. Oh, right. And Burbank. It's like holding a book. It's a body of work. And that's why vinyl is always, to this day, it's like, I will still take it over an MP3 all day long. An MP3, a file on my phone, who gives a shit about that? That's important. And that's why I've held on to all these records. Vinyl Revival, well, it's all about this. It's all about my kid coming down into my music room. And I have all my vinyl records, like all around my office. And she's like, what is this? <laughs> I said, in a, you know, in a land far, far away, we used to listen to vinyl records and you had to be really careful. You like, you put them on the turntable and you had to take the needle. Don't be too harsh because you're going to scratch it. You had to be precious. It was valuable. And she's like, well, can I take some of these up? I said, sure. She was playing these records for her friends up in their, her room. The doors closed. I'm like, it so reminded me of what I used to do as a kid. I would totally try to escape my parents and close the door and I would put headphones on. I would get lost in the music and I would get lost in who wrote it, why they write it, who recorded it, where do they record it. But watching my daughter discover that same experience, I'm like, wow, it's, I got to write a song about that. So the next thing you know, it's like Eric Clapton, Johnny Cash, Errol Smith, The Who, The Clash, Merle Haggard, George Jones, The Eagles and The Beatles and The Rolling Stones. Almond Brothers, Van Halen, Willie Nelson, Chris and Waylon, Jimi Hendrix, Jethro Toll, and the boss and the king of rock and roll. That's what all came first. Just rhyme, putting that rhyme together. And I'm like, well, there's all the hard work. The chorus should be simple. Gonna have a vinyl revival. And the song was written in about 15 minutes. The video was, well, I mean, I shot it on lunch money. A lot of the song was recorded at my house. And again, we had a big party, we had a barbecue, and then we're out by the pool, and it was like, I wanted it to be loose and fun because that's what rock and roll is. If you overthink it, you've already screwed up, man. I thought, well, this is fun, everyone's having a good time, and you know, I've showcased a lot of my vinyl records and a lot of my musician buddies, but like, I need something to just like, just kind of take it over the top. And I'll never, never forget my wife said, why don't you just jump in the pool with a guitar? And I have a lot of precious guitars. I don't know, for whatever reason I picked up this, it's a Telecaster that I never play. And it was given to me by the uh, lead guitar player of KISS. And uh, I'm like, well, I never played this guitar. It looks cooler than it actually plays. I thought, what the hell, man? So I just like, cannonball, baby, bam! <laughs> and uh, fortunately, the guitar wasn't ruined. It was just a fun experience. I mean, the rock and roll is like, it needs to be Thelma and Louise, guys. Like. Just drive off the freaking cliff. If you don't fly off the cliff, it's not rock and roll, man. It's gotta be dangerous, man, because that's what's sexy.